Next, we're going to compute the total market value of the firm. So at the last video, we look at into how to convert um, the book value into a per share basis. Uh, in this part, we're going to look at how do we evaluate the market value of the firm in aggregate. So we are converting per share value to total. The first uh, term is called market capitalization, market cap. Market cap represents the total market value of a firm. So we take the per share price, so $75, multiply that by the number of shares outstanding. So for our firm, the market capitalization is $1.5 million. Next, we look at the enterprise value. The enterprise value is the entire value of the firm. So it includes the equity component, so or stock. So market capitalization has to do with the stock value or equity value. In addition to that, we also need liability or debt. Ideally, we want to have the market value of the debt as well. And then we subtract from it any cash. So let's take a look at the balance sheet of this company. So we, uh, we want to focus on the market value of debt that is interest bearing. So first, let's take a look at interest bearing debt. So if you look down in terms of liability, we have current under current liability, we have accounts receivable, NOOCs receivable, and long-term debt. Um, of the three, accounts payable, we typically do not pay interest to our supplier. So since it's non-interest bearing, we will not include accounts payable, but we will include notes payable of $175,000 and long-term debt of $205,000. Now these are technically book value, and what we want is market value. For simplicity in here, we're going to assume that book value is the same as market value. Usually that's not the case. So this is a very simplifying assumption. Usually this is not true, but we're going to assume it is true in this case. Later on in this, in this class, we're going to look at how to compute the market value of debt. The reason we make this simplifying assumption is because the market value of debt oftentimes is not available on, the, on uh, an exchange like stock prices are. Uh, you can look up the stock price really easy on any stock exchange, but the stock, uh, the price of bond is a lot less um, accessible. So we'll assume that the value is one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars and two hundred five thousand dollars. The last item we need is cash, and for year one, the cash amount is seventy thousand dollars. So now we have everything we need to compute the enterprise value. So the enterprise value is the market cap of one and a half million dollars plus the market value of debt. So we have one and a half million dollars plus $175,000 of notes playable plus $205,000 of long-term debt. Subtract from that the cash of $70,000 and we have an enterprise value of $1.81 million. And now we can use the enterprise value to compute the next market ratio. The last ratio is the enterprise value multiple. So EV here stands for enterprise value. And this multiple is the enterprise value divided by EBITDA or earnings before interest and tax depreciation and amortization. So since the income here, EBITDA, uh, in excludes interest. So this is the income earned by the entire company before we pay out interest or dividend. So this is the firm's income. Also important is we are, comp we are looking at the cash flow really because we add back any non-cash expenses. We add back depreciation and we add back amortization. So this is telling us how much cash operating income the firm is generating uh, relative to is market value of the entire firm. So we computed the enterprise value to be $1.8 million. And we have computed EBITDA earlier when we compute the cash coverage ratio. So we're just going to use the same value that we computed before. Um, the answer for this company is 6.7 times. So the value of the firm is 6.7 times the cash flow that it generates. 
Uh, here we conclude the calculation of the market value ratio. Again, the importance of the market value ratio is to help you identify whether a company is a good investment in addition to its uh, operating performance or financial performance. So market value can answer the question, is this company a good investment? In the next uh, video, we're going to look into um, using financial ratio to help us estimate the future planning and future growth prospect of a company.